All right, let's take a look at that. So this is gonna be first lap. I think second lap has a chance of being okay, but I was able to match like my speed in lap one and lap two of turn one and two. And when that's the case, lap one is usually better. I could be wrong though. I usually am a propagandist for lap one qualifying. So anyway, we're gonna start up top here. This is a very, very difficult um, uh, out lap. So you wanna get on the brake on the top lane, but then eventually aim your car to come down to the second to the top seam. So as I get on the throttle, you see the car starts to turn down. I can't go full throttle yet or else it would straighten out too much. And then right when I'm pointed down there in a straight line, that's when I go full throttle. You see how much I'm sawing back and forth on the wheel? That's how loose this car is getting. This line, the car does not love, especially on these cold-ish tires. But, <laughs> Jesus. But yeah, just, just rodeo it, man. As long as you're not full sliding, you're going to be carrying enough speed. So that's, that's, what, that's what happened there. Okay, so take all of the apron here, all of it, everything and more. Come back up. Right as you get back up, you gotta get ready to turn again. No, no dilly-dallying. So I get all the way up and then start to turn. So first what I do is I lower to about 40% throttle and start aiming at this first seam from the bottom. I then trail brake at about 10% until I'm about a lane up from that seam. Then I get back to 70% until I stick the seam and then I hold that 70% until I can straighten out the wheel and go full throttle. You can slide up a bit early. That's completely fine because this is more about momentum than line. So take a look at that one more time. So we started way up at the wall, half throttle to come down the track, trail brake from about the second lane up to the first lane up from the seam. Then we go back to the throttle once we're about that half lane to a lane up from the seam. Hold that 70% throttle until the car can start straightening out. And then as you straighten out, you can go full throttle and it's gonna be loose. So we gotta take care of that. Okay, three and four. Sorry if I'm taking this a little bit quick. This is like the seventh one I've made of these today. I'm stockpiling them while I go on vacation. Uh, three and four, same exact idea. The, the corner's gonna execute a little bit differently, but we still want to half throttle until we're a lane down. Then we trail break another lane down and then when we're half a lane up from the seam that we're aiming at which is this first seam from the bottom we pick up 70 percent throttle then we hold that 70 percent throttle until we're able to go full throttle and drive the car back up the hill in a straight line don't bother with this following this dark groove here it might mess you up but you really are just trying to get on full 100 percent throttle as early as possible without sliding the rear tire that's like the most important thing okay take a look at that one more time so as we're coming down the hill, half throttle, we pick up 10% trail brake until we're about half a lane up from the seam. Once we're a half lane up from the seam, we pick up 70% throttle until we stick the seam. Then we gradually raise it until we're able to unload our wheel and drive straight up to the wall. And that's how we get off the corner by managing the looseness in that position. The earlier you pick up 100% throttle, the looser you'll be, so just keep pushing that. And then once again, we will finally cut one more time the apron to the start finish line. Pretty decent lap, I think. All right, now let's take a look at long run. All right, now let's take a look at long run. So I still think the bottom is good here. iRacing is trying to tell me through like what's dark, the like, grooves in the track and whatnot. It, iRacing is trying to tell me that the third line is the best. And I tried it and it feels fine. The car feels really engaged in the track in a way that I don't feel like the car has in the but I really do like this this line right here. I might lose a bit on, on exit. But getting the car on the bottom, this is like the best way to preserve your tires because if you're pretty if you're very aggressive on that uh, top there, it's gonna be pretty darn tough for you. Now, you can run, it seems like you can run anywhere. This might end up being a multi lane because like you saw, this lane here was what I ran for qualifying, dipping your tires kind of right on the first seam. Oh, looseness. And you can see it's, it's fast. That might be the line to run if you're aggressive at the beginning of the run. The, the car feels so engaged with the track in a way that I don't, I don't feel like it's ever been. Kind of confusing me on what's going to be good on long run. 
because of Charlotte. As long as you weren't like crazy on your tires, you didn't have to run those mega tire saving lines. And I think that might be the case again here. I tried the bottom. We'll go back to the bottom in a little bit. But let's try like here. I mean, that's on the right rear. That's not really a ton of right front wear. Okay, now let's go all the way back to the bottom for a while. See how this compares. So we, we're going to shallow entry. We'll call it the Larry line, of course. Kind of works. It's, see, it's really hard to get the car to stick on the bottom. Yeah. That might have been just a mistake. I'll try it again in a little bit. I like this, this feels nice. But you see how much time we're losing. I don't think it's worth it to be losing that much time to a line that's probably fine on tires. This second line, I think is, what I'm feeling, it's fine on tires. If you're not using too much steering wheel. And it's just so much faster in the bottom. That, but I did make a mistake on the bottom of that corner. So I'm not gonna count up the bottom just yet. How about here, how much time am I getting here? A little tenth of a second. Yeah. So this this is weird for Kentucky. I really don't think the bottom is viable. Let's try down here. And just try to drop the car straight off the corner like this. Yeah. No, you just can't match. You can't match that second lane. Okay. I'm pretty convinced the bottom is not the way to go. I think that even if it did save a decent amount of tire over the second lane here, you wouldn't be saving enough for yourself to be making up that time that you were losing. So, I think depending on how dynamic track comes into play, you're going to be rotating between the second groove and third groove here. Do not overdrive your entries, that's going to be what kills your tires the most. As long as you're able to get a decent entry with like a good trail break, not using too much wheel to get where you want to go, then you're going to be completely fine. I'm, that's what I'm convinced of now. So, to, so we'll do one more lap here on the line that I recommend. So notice how I'm not turning the steering wheel too much because I'm backing off early, using my brake to get there, and then just using an early throttle to ride the line. This is what we used to be able to do in the bottom. But this, that's the perfect corner. If you drive that corner every single lap of the race, you're going to be winning the race, honestly. Oh, that corner, no, this corner, you, this corner is not how you win the race. That's not how you win the race. <laughs> but at one and two, that, that's how you win the race. <laughs> but that's why it's hard, right? You gotta do it every single time. All right, let's check the tires here. Ninety-six, ninety-five. Okay, yeah, that's exactly what I want to see. So, that second groove was wearing the tires evenly. It's faster than the bottom. That third groove, I think, is going to wear a little bit too much right front. So, it's all about just managing your right rear while staying on that second groove. All right, thank you all for watching. Hope you have a wonderful day, and I hope to see you all on the track.